ever get stuck in your writer's block, even though you are not a writer? Hey, coaches, if this sounds like you, I got a very special episode for you. I've been saying years to my students and also to my community member that writing is your number one skill that every coach I believe needs to have. And yes, you can outsource to someone else or maybe even hire a copywriters or copy editor helping you writing your copies for your social media, for your website, for everything that you do in your coaching business. But it all comes down to you behind the scene who is the business owner And all these copies that your copywriter writes or your copy editor produced for you or your social media managers decided to take over that writing task and start writing for you, you never go away from the fact that you are going to be ultimately the person your clients will be working with. Now imagine your client walking into your door and suddenly there's a disconnection between what you're saying to how you say it inside your coaching business. Essentially, you need to write your own copies. That is the simple truth. And that is something that we're going to talk about with my guest today, Jacqueline Fish. She is a copywriter, author, and there's so many golden nuggets that she had given away in this episode that you just don't want to miss. So let's dive in. Hey there, welcome to the Make It Visible podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Quay. I am a visibility and marketing coach, and this is our special spot for female coaches who might be feeling a little bit lost in the crowd, especially if you're introverted. We're here to help you to stand out. So join us as we share stories, tips, and fun chat that will help you shine. Whether you are new or perhaps you've been coaching for a while, this is going to be your go-to place to be seen and heard. So get comfy and grab your coffee. Let's get started. Okay, good morning, everyone. And today I have someone very special for you and you are going to love it. Just a couple of days ago, I shared a post in my email community where I believe the one skill that every coaches need is writing. If you don't know how to write or if you're struggling with not knowing what to write and what to say, then you want to listen to today's episode. Today, I have Jacqueline Fish, who is an author, copywriter, writing coach, and the founder of the Intuitive Writing School. She helps creatives moving from past writer's block and perfectionism so that they can finish their important work. And she also supports business owners in finding their authentic voice so that they can make an impact into the world. I know you cannot wait to bring and meet my guest, Jacqueline. So without further ado... Let's give a warm welcome to Jacqueline Fish. Jacqueline. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And I love that you posted that in your community. That is spot on. And I I totally agree. Didn't know you did that, but I agree. (laughs) <laughs> it's really real. It's one thing that I find, including myself, thinking back to where I was. One thing I didn't know what to do was how do I write it so that people want to read it? And that was one of my biggest challenge when it comes to talking about my business. So I'm, I'm really curious, how did you start? How did you find your passion in writing? Great question. I didn't necessarily grow up thinking I wanted to be a writer. <laughs> I actually grew up, I wanted to be a fashion designer. I was very creative. I, for some reason, I don't know the answer. I talked myself out of going to fashion school, went to business school. I worked in management consulting and corporate communications. So I was always writing and communicating. However, it was in a very corporate, buttoned up, fancy, formal kind of way. And through some twists and turns, three layoffs within five years, two from the same company, having kids, I first started blogging. And it wasn't necessarily that the layoffs led me there. It kind of led me to an instinct like, hmm, this job isn't it, but I don't know what else to do. I started a food blog and did that for years. Eventually that fell away. And what I realized I enjoyed was writing. And I started to connect the dots. So here I was writing proposals, selling millions of dollars of work for these companies, writing communications that tens of thousands of people would see. And I had to be clear, direct, and and every place I worked had a different style. 
And after my third layoff, returning to a corporate communications job, I wanted to go all in on copywriting and helping other companies do this. And I told my boss at the time, and he said, that's great. Why don't you sell this for us? Now, if you ever worked in a consulting company, you get billed out at a lot more than what you actually make. So I was like, "Mm, I'm just going to sell it myself. So that's what I did. I grew my business on the side. I started initially as a done for you copywriter and I wrote for anyone who would hire me. I emailed pretty much everyone in my network, let them know what I was up to. That wasn't going to get me fired. So I told them I'm growing my business on the side to eventually leave so that I can spend more time at home with my kids who were young at the time and do more work I love and work with my gifts. So jumped into that, took about a year and a half until I was able to fully leave my job, which was a day like (laughs) imagine ever going back to that. And then pretty early on in writing for others, what I discovered most was that the people who got the best results did most of the writing instead of me. So I know a lot of people are like, what? But you're the copywriter. You're like, you write better. No, no. I really think that each of us as individuals, we can write. You don't need to call yourself a writer. I mean, it's actually probably better if you don't. And what I saw was when people did their own writing, and then all I was there doing was helping pull out what they wanted to say, Mm -hmm. and then sometimes just tweaking it. So the tweaks would be in so many coaches and experts, well, they're experts in their field, and they use a lot of language that their clients don't understand. So we know so much, but we're not bringing it down and meeting our people where they are. So it's usually just a tweak. So it's learning our audience's language and learning ours. So I got into some teaching there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, in that email I sent out to my community, I told them about how I was writing in the past and versus how I'm writing now. And so what I was writing in the past was like words like, oh, you need to practice meditation because meditation will help you or guide you. And you find that true self and you're so intuitive. You're so connected to yourself. But like those are the languages like your everyday people won't understand. They just want to know, like, how do I grow better tomato? (laughs) (laughs) Right. They just want to know how do I grow better tomato? So if you can teach me how to grow better tomato, then I'm all yours. I'm all ears. Like I will listen to you day in and day out. And this is how people like go to YouTube and they watch, binge watch so many things because they feel connected to the topic that they want, they're passionate about. I was looking on your website and you were talking about creative and intuitive writer. What makes a creative and intuitive writer? I think your intuition is basically stripping out any of that outside noise. Mm -hmm. It's listening to how you want to speak. What comes through naturally, like those instincts, to trust those. So I think an example is probably helpful here. Mm -hmm. Your people have probably tried the day to send their email newsletter or a day to write a social post. You're committed to writing something. And there's two ways I see people do it. They think about it and think about it and think some more and they write something, they're editing while they're writing, which I never recommend. And they might get something out and then say, nope, this is not good and start over. Eventually, so much time has passed by where they often go to social media to look for inspiration. (laughs) I'm not sure what to say. Let me see what everyone else is saying. Don't do that either. The opposite end, and this is where our inner intuitive writer kicks in, is when we're so fired up to write something, we can't hold it in. And it's that super quick email, that super quick social post that just falls out. You're not thinking. It's like your body takes over. You're in the flow. Mm -hmm. Like you're not trying to force anything. It just comes out. And then what probably happens or what I see most of the time is it gets the most engagement Mm -hmm. replies to your email and things like, oh, you were in my head. How did you know I was feeling like this? And that's where the magic is. That's where I teach people to write from because it's natural and it's not, it's not hard. It's, It's easy when we do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think like most coaches and course creators and are we overthinking too much about what to write and what to say? Probably. (laughs) Overthinking 
probably one of the most common things I see, which is also tied up in perfectionism Mm -hmm. and procrastination. We overthink because we're blaming perfectionism or we think something needs to be perfect. And your audience, your potential clients as coaches, they're not reading your writing to judge you on their grammar. (laughs) And if they are, then they're probably not a great client anyway. But I really encourage people to trust themselves. And one way to get used to writing in a way that feels natural Mm -hmm. is using talk to text. And that can also be a great way to get started if you look at the blank page and you freeze up and are like, nope, I can't do this. (laughs) Also, especially helpful if you're great talking things out, like you're good on your feet. Mm -hmm. Pick up a talk to text app, talk for two to five minutes. And you'll have a ton of stuff to draw from that then you can then take and put that into writing. And Mm -hmm. and that will sound more natural. There's some editing that will probably need to happen because when we speak, we often use more words than we would if we're putting words on the page. And I don't think the auto correction also helped because one of my clients did that and the voice to text somehow came out a little off because the auto correction was making some changes for her. But I love how you share about the voice to text. I recently had a client who was stuck and telling her story. And so one of the things I asked them to do was like, tell me your story. And she was stuck for, in the forever land. And so I said, well, why don't you think about how do you speak? So why don't you record an audio version for me? And then yeah. so she did that. She was able to come up with her story by talking about it. What you share is just absolutely gold for someone who had that writer's blog. And, you know, I can totally relate to the grammar police because I have people coming to me and say, Michelle, you made a grammar here, grammar mistake here. Oh, Michelle, you made a typo here. I'm like, are you a grammar police? Are you a spelling bee police? What are you doing on social media? They're not probably enjoying their work and not busy serving their clients. That's, that's what Well, I- it's not for me to judge, but I love everything that you share about getting moving someone off their writer's block. So when it comes to social media posting or any type of writing that we're putting out there into the world to actually make it resonate, what do you believe are some of the most important elements that need to happen? And I know I'm like picking your brain. I'm like, (laughs) while I have you here, I wanted to make sure that I get the most out of your appearance here. Yes, pick away. So social media communicating is quite different from email and having stuff on your website. So I love social media because it's such a place for complete freedom. Another side tip in here, if you find creating on social media easier than writing emails or blogs or anything else, Mm -hmm. start with social media and take that and then turn it into a blog or a newsletter. You're just going to change the tone a little bit and, and tidy up some sentences. But some of my favorite social tips, and this applies to a lot of writing too. Mm -hmm. Short, punchy sentences. This is where, yeah, the grammar police, they don't follow me. They do pick out some of my errors too, which I just laugh at because they obviously don't know me and know that I teach people to unlearn everything they've learned (laughs) about about writing in school and corporate. Writing online is totally different. I wish they would teach more classes on this in elementary education. Short, punchy sentences. Mm -hmm. And also think about blank space. So our brains are lazy and the more we can quickly skim something and see lots of blank space around our words, it's easier for us to get the idea of what someone's saying. And then if you do that, one other way is to add, this is what I call it. I don't know if there's a technical term, Mm -hmm. visual variety. So what that means is if you write a social post that is one line space, one line space, one line space, and the whole thing is like that, it's hard for our brains to know where to focus. Mm. So adding some variety, like one line space, three lines space, one line space, two lines, if that makes sense. Visual interruption, like you want to visually interrupt. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Having something that entices them to open. So think along the lines of email subject lines. Like, why should I read this? Why should I click and spend the next 90 seconds reading your post? Mm -hmm. People's attention spans are super short and we also want to learn something. Mm -hmm. 
Does your life coaching business attract the right clients to you? You're finding yourself stuck and not sure where to begin, how to start in order to attract and connect with your dream clients. This idea of posting on social media about your coaching business is just so overwhelming that you find yourself getting all caught up in questioning what type of content should I post? What do I need to say in order to get them to stop the score and get more clients? Imagine you can write, speak, create any messages that resonate with your potential dream client without sacrificing your uniqueness. Having the flow of with your words, the language that you use that makes yourself memorable to your audience who will naturally be drawn to you. And at the end of the day, creating a marketing style that attract your dream client who feels aligned so that you can build stronger bonds, happier clients, and closing more leads. I completely understand and that is why I created this simple guide to start a conversation that would inspire people to take action and transform the way that you market your coaching business, all in five simple, easy to follow steps. So head over to coremessage.attractclientthroughstorytelling.com today to grab your copy. It is time to claim your uniqueness, my friend. Other thing I see some people doing with social media is trying to do too much with one post. Like you don't need to cram 10 tips into one post. Try one. (laughs) Like that's it. Which also is of service to your reader. Because if your reader is like, all I need to do is this one thing, got it. Or three things. It gives me something super actionable and easy to do. That's not 10 steps. And like, huh, how am I going to do all these things? Mm. Yeah. The tip I share with a lot of my community member is that you have 365 days. You're worrying about what to post tomorrow. <laughs> you, you just gave away everything within that one post. How about break it up a little bit? You know, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I recommend is like to get past that overthinking. I've heard some people call this like a throwaway post, which I don't like that language. I haven't come up with another name for it. But just knowing that you're just getting something out and putting it out there and you're writing it, letting it go, detaching from the outcome and moving on with your day, (laughs) like getting it done just to get it done. Yeah. And then that helps with thinking about it too much. This just came to my head and I wasn't planning to bring this and shifting kind of the topic a little bit, but like what's your take on using the AI? So I'll give you a little backstory because recently I came across a peer coach who was trying really hard to using email in marketing. And what I noticed was that posts that she has sent out and delivered to the subscribers are AI generated. Oh, no. Yes. So you can kind of see the pattern. I think you and I, we do copywriting. We write so much. You can tell like when is AI generated and when you brought in your own personal touch, even though it was generated from the AI, you can still have that retain that personal touch. So what's your take on the recent AI overtake in the writing world? I love this question. I'm getting so many questions about it. (laughs) Overall, my take, especially as a creative, as a coach, as an individual, don't engage with it with your writing intentionally at all. Zero, none. (laughs) Don't even use it for inspiration. So part of the reason for that, when you input your writing into one of these generative AI tools or even ask it prompts, you're training it. You're training a machine to sound like you. Do we really need more people to sound like everyone else? No, we don't. And that's what I see a lot of AI written stuff doing. It's aimed at pleasing. So it's aimed at being, I guess, generic, mediocre might be some good ways to describe it. And I see people relying on it or turning to it right now because it's new, it's free, it's fun. And I'm like, don't do it. So I'm definitely seeing some of this with other creative industries, Mm -hmm. the voiceover industry and in acting, where I'm not sure what the situation is with the current strike of voiceover artists. But what they were asked to do is basically train AI machines to sound like them. And video can do that as well. So actors, voiceover artists, they're being asked to train the machine once, and then it can use your likeness voice and video for forever and you're not getting paid for it. So there's all kinds of problems with that. You can definitely tell if something's been written by AI. For me, it's actually been really great for business. 
Actually, one of my clients hired a marketing agency to write sales copy. They used AI to write it. And she messaged me. She's like, Jack, it is total crap. I'm like, I know. She's like, I need a human. I'm like, I know. <laughs> People are experimenting with it and trying it. Overall, I think just get comfortable with communicating however you're comfortable because that's you. That's how you communicate. And no machine can replace our divine connection. Yeah. I prove a point to one of my clients about how using AI and it will never retain your story. It can never tell your story the way that you wanted to tell it. And yeah. one of the things that I know you also teach your student is the authentic storytelling strategies. And I remember the first time I encountered AI, I told AI to, hey, you know, tell me a story about a coach who's struggling with getting clients. And he gave me a coachee's name as Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we tried it on a couple of different. So I had my clients. Well, let's see what you got. And everybody, mm -hmm. the AI all came up with the name Sarah. So Sarah is a common name for all our ideal clients. <laughs> I thought oh, I should wow. put it out there because it's going back to what you had just said. It can never replace that human voice. It can never replace our human touch because it's a machine, right? Yeah. A machine can never be you. What makes it an authentic piece? Like, what are some of the elements that need to happen in that authentic piece so that people can feel you, people can actually see that this is a human behind writing this piece? Yeah, it comes from you. And if, if you're pointing toward writer's block or thinking you don't have anything to say, yeah. I think all that means is you're out of inspiration. So go have some conversations, go talk to people. Have some online coffee chats, have some in-person ones, teach some workshops, go do something, go work at a different place other than your home office from behind a screen. And just by doing that, it opens up so many ideas and I get it. I'm an introvert. I like working at home. <laughs> I can only people in small doses. However, I make an effort to do it in person, go to networking events and meet people. And I met up with two actual live humans on Friday. So two in one day. <laughs> it's definitely tired. But after that, I had so many ideas, so much inspiration. And not only that, you get extra clarification on how you communicate. Because when we're online, we can become very filtered and our perspective becomes quite narrow, especially if we're engaging with others that are only in our industry, we kind of lose touch. Yeah. So as long as whatever you're communicating came from you, your experience, and this takes practice to take an experience and turn it into a story or a lesson for your client. Mm -hmm. And once you start doing that though, or once you start digging for those experiences you've had, like I can guarantee everyone listening has at least a hundred stories to tell, even if you think it's boring, <laughs> <laughs> which is our own filter and label, but boring is relatable. And who's to say that your story won't help one person? Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the problem also paralyzed people is that I have too many. What would be your tip? Just share one tip because I know you have so many. <laughs> Maybe just share one tip on how do I overcome the fact that I have too many? Yes. I hear this a lot too. It's like, I have so many ideas. How do I pick one? I'm going to give you two, but I'll make them quick. <laughs> I don't want you to give away too much. Because yeah, I know, you know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Whatever it is you're promoting, like if you're working toward promoting a certain course or offering or something specific or focusing on a problem, choose one that aligns with that. Like what story could you tell that aligns with that problem? Second one, trust your body. Look at the list and notice what jumps out at you. So this is learning to use your body's intuitive language. Some ways to practice that, like sitting quietly, saying your name out loud. My name is whatever. Notice what your body does. Do you lean forward? Do you feel an upward pull? Like it feels right. And then you can say, my name is Bob. Bob, if you're listening, use something different. <laughs> and then whatever is not your name, notice what happens in your body when it's a no. So if you're looking at a list, see which ones stand out to you. If you narrowed it down to one or two, look at that one. Imagine you've chosen to tell that story. What's the very first thing you feel in your body? Do you feel a sense of dread? Like, oh, I really don't want to write this one. Or, ooh, this is exciting. Maybe I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to tell it and trusting it. 
That's a great tip. I never thought about like getting into the body and asking like, how do I feel about this? What do I yeah. want? What's coming out for me? That's a great tip. So I know you have a writing school. Like, how does a client work with you? Like, what's that process? I have a few ways that I work with people. So uh -huh. I work with people in community. So my community members are business owners. They are not writers. They wouldn't call themselves writers, but they have writing to do. Website copy, emails, blogs. Some of them are writing books now, which is mm -hmm. cool. Some of them are even writing fiction. I had no idea <laughs> they had fiction. <laughs> so we do that in a group. We do live writing sessions where we have accountability to show up, declare what we're working on, and then we work for two hours with breaks. Mm -hmm. I teach workshops in there, and we do some questions once a month. There's also an option in there for people to get some hands-on feedback from me where we do on-demand reviews. So that's also in a small group. Or I do something similar one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll work with a client one-on-one -on -one to write everything they need. And I usually do this month to month. So it can be one month or three or forever. Some clients choose to work with me for long-term. Mm -hmm. And they take all my copywriting templates. So in my done-for-you work, I take everything that I do and turn it into a template. So I use those templates in my community and one-on-one. -on -one. They do the writing with my guidance. I tell them what to do. I don't tell them what to do. That sounds bossy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not that like authoritarian kind of person. I suggest what to do. And if they <laughs> like that, they're, they're welcome to take my templates and write with them and then rearrange however they see fit, how it makes sense for them. And then I jump in and help them make it better. I give them feedback. I show all the suggestions so they can see how do I make this better? How can mm -hmm. I make this work for me? And we also talk strategy because writing is not just like throw some words on a page and be done with it. It's like, well, what are we communicating with this? What do we want our reader to do? Do we want our reader to feel something? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I still do done for you copywriting. And I do a lot of ends. <laughs> I do a lot of things and I love them all. So I've done some copywriting and then I also do some corporate or team training. So taking people out of that corporate writing, those habits and helping them write more persuasively and sound more authentic and like humans. Yeah. You have a lot of N and I love all your N's uh, because <laughs> these are the things that a lot of coaches need, a lot of course creator. I mean, now we're living in a world where we are constantly communicating with someone and that persuasive writing, I feel like we're always selling something. We're not selling our program, then we're selling an idea. And in order to sell that idea, that creative writing, that intuitive writing and that persuasive writing really comes in play. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If you were to give one advice, what would you tell people in terms of if they're struggling with their writing? So I'm going to make this two things. <laughs> trust yourself and trust your experience. And then two, practice. Like I've been blogging for over 10 years. I look back at some of my old writing and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like I, I cringe. And that's fine. It's okay. I've grown, I've practiced. And because we are constantly changing and evolving, so is our writing. And that's okay. I trust that whatever comes out of my mouth or onto the page in the moment is what needed to come out. I love it. Where can my audience find you if they need to uh, look for your service? Yes. You can find me in two places at JacquelineFish.com or TheIntuitiveWritingSchool.com. Love it. I will include all the links inside the show notes. And I just cannot say how much I appreciate you coming to the show because this writing thing that's in on top of my audience mind, it's also been on top of my mind. One of the things, like I said, is that writing is your skill. Like writing is the one skill that a lot of coaches don't realize that you need to have in order to market your business, in order to make it a sustainable, profitable. You need to know how to write and how to write well, not just writing. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the show. And I just cannot say how much I appreciate you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, beautiful. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and found value from this episode, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast platform and leave me a rating and review. One thing I was struggling in my early years in business was finding the right people to connect with. 
it feels like I was on this entrepreneurial journey on my own. And sometimes we all just need friends who can share our dreams and hopes. Someone who can relate to what we're going through as we grow our business together. If you are a woman coach who is ready to grow your coaching business and looking for strategies to get seen, get heard, and get hired, I want to invite you to come and find me in our community on Facebook at Get Clients with Storytelling. This is a community of women coaches who want to grow a coaching business by creating engaging, visible, and authentic content with storytelling for their business to get more leads and attract more clients. I will see you at our next tea party.